Bonjour, aspiring Paris explorers. Planning a trip to the City of Light can be a thrilling experience, but it often comes with its fair share of challenges. Navigating a city as rich in history, culture and attractions as Paris can be overwhelming, especially when you're faced with the dilemma of how much time to spend at each iconic site or how to efficiently get around. Picture this, you're in Paris for the first time, standing in front of the Eiffel Tower with a map in one hand and a list of must-see places in the other. You may find yourself asking, how long should I spend at the Louvre? Where's the best spot for breakfast? And where can I catch an authentic Parisian dinner? Fear not, in today's video and the next one, I've got your back. I'll be breaking down foolproof 3D and 5D itineraries that take the guesswork out of your Parisian adventure. From iconic landmarks to hidden gems, and from charming cafes to exquisite dining spots, I've carefully curated these itineraries to ensure you make the most of your time in this enchanting city. But that's not all. I'll also guide you on where to stay to optimize your travel and how to navigate the city's efficient transport system. By the end of these videos, you'll have the keys to unlocking a seamless and unforgettable experience in Paris. So, grab your baguette and join me as I unveil the perfect itineraries for your first visit to Paris. Let's dive in. First, let's unwrap the insights from a recent survey I made through my channel's community tab. Here's what 250 members of my community shared about the time they spent or will spend visiting the City of Light. One day in Paris, 1%. Two days, 3%. Three days, 17% of you. Five days, 30%. And seven days or more, a whopping 49%. Interesting, isn't it? Now, if you're planning a week or more, lucky you. With ample time on your side, you've got the luxury to explore at your own pace and you may not need a detailed itinerary. For those spending seven days or more, enjoy the freedom to wander. For the rest of you, diving into the heart of Paris for three or five days, I've tailored the itineraries coming right up, ensuring you will make the most of every moment in my enchanting city. In this first video, let's focus on crafting the perfect itinerary for those of you who can't stay more than three days in Paris. Now let's talk about where to set up your Parisian base camp for this Paris Express 3D adventure. When time is of the essence, convenience is key. That's why the Opera District emerges as the ideal home base. Situated at the heart of the city, near the Opera, it's not just a cultural hub, but also the primary transport hub of Paris. Time is precious, and staying here ensures you won't lose a moment in transit. With quick access to the efficient metro system, you'll effortlessly navigate Paris, making the most of your short but sweet stay in a city of light. I have selected for you three excellent four-star hotels, all of them less than five walking minutes from the Opera Transport Hub. For each hotel, I will give you the free consolation without breakfast price for three nights over a randomly selected weekend in March 2024. It's time now to start our first day in Paris. Depending on where you come from, there's a big chance for you to be jet lagged. So this morning, have breakfast at your hotel. We will not leave until 10 a.m. For the first day of your Parisian debut, your rendezvous begins with the iconic Eiffel Tower. And we'll use the Paris Metro to get there. 
Perry streets get often congested, so opting for the efficient Persian metro system over taxis or Uber will ensure swift and seamless journeys. Expect 8 to 10 metro rides during our 3 day journey in Paris. The Navigo Easy Card with 10 tickets proves a more cost effective choice than individual cardboard tickets. Our first metro ride, Line 8, from Opera to Ecole Militaire. Coming from Ecole Militaire Metro Station to the Eiffel Tower allows for an extended view as you stroll along the Champ de Mars before reaching the Iron Lady. For detailed guidance on visiting the Eiffel Tower, check out my video Rising Above Paris, a practical guide to visiting the Eiffel Tower. I strongly suggest that if you want to go up the Eiffel Tower, especially on the third level, you book your tickets in advance from the official website. The lines here for tickets can be very long, and with a pre-booked ticket, you can skip part of the wait. You can book your tickets up to 60 days in advance. Do it as soon as possible, as for some times in the year, they are sold out very rapidly. Here are 8 tips for a perfect visit to the Eiffel Tower. Once you're done with the Eiffel Tower, walk to the beautiful pedestrian street Rue Claire. The street is one of the most pleasant in Paris. Take the opportunity to buy something for a nice picnic. Or, if the weather doesn't allow you to eat outside, sit down at one of the restaurants on the street. Once your shopping is done, walk back to the Champ de Mars and enjoy your picnic with a view. To leave the Eiffel Tower area, we will take the metro at Trocadero station. Along the way to it, you will have time to take countless photos. And we're back on the metro on line 9. Exit at Chaussée d'Antin Lafayette station and head towards the Opéra Garnier. A self-guided tour of the opera costs 15 euro plus 7 euro for the audio guide which is really worth the money. In this 3-day itinerary, we won't have the time to go to Versailles, but this gallery is as beautiful as Versailles' Great Hall of Mirrors. Wouldn't you love to see an opera or a ballet here? Enough visiting monuments now, it's shopping time! Let's take a very short walk to the Galerie Lafayette. On Boulevard Haussmann, just a few meters apart, are two of the greatest department stores, Galerie Lafayette and Printemps. Let's finish our day wandering by doing some shopping, or just visiting them, as they are really great places to see. If the dome at Gary Lafayette is beautiful, the one in Printemps is quite nice too. If you want to do a bit of luxury shopping, both stores have all major brands. Both department stores have great three rooftops.
now for a first day, we've done a lot. It's time for a legitimate rest at your nearby hotel. Or maybe you can get to the sauna or the swimming pool. Let's now finish day one with a good typical French dinner. For this, close to your hotel, you can choose between an excellent bistro, Le Mesturet, and one of the best brasserie in Paris, Le Vaudeville. A short 10 minute walk to your hotel and it's time to summarize this first day. You've done a lot. Now time for a good night's sleep. We have a long day tomorrow. Here are the places we will go to on day two. No breakfast at the hotel this morning. We start at 8.30 a.m. with a walk to Café Nemours for a true French café breakfast. Or for a more upscale breakfast, go to Café Marly, just in front of the Louvre Pyramid. Here again, for detailed guidance on visiting the Louvre Museum, check out my video Louvre Explorer's Guide 10 Insider Tips and 10 Must See Gems for a Perfect Visit. Here are 10 tips for the best visit to the Louvre Museum. Maybe the most important tip, choose the right entrance. Whenever it's crowded, enter via the Porte des Lions. There usually is no line there. But you can only enter this way if you have pre-booked your ticket. Museums whet your appetite. Let's have lunch in a superb Art Deco brasserie, passing through the pleasant gardens of the Palais Royal on our way. These are the Colonne de Buren in the Palais Royal courtyard. And now, let's walk to the end of the Palais Royal Gardens. The Grand Colbert is an elegant art deco brasserie, providing excellent service and food. For lunch, they have this very interesting menu bistro. Indulging in Parisian delights at lunch? Be ready for a post-feast calorie burn. So let's stroll to the Louvre Rivoli metro station through two of the most beautiful covered passages of Paris. The first one is the awesome Galerie Vivienne, with its magnificent 19th century architecture. On our way to the second passage, let's stop for a few moments on the very cute Place de Valois, where a certain Emily in Paris works at Savoir. Even though Galerie Vero Doda was built at the same time as Galerie Vivienne, it's quite different less classy, more utilitarian, but nevertheless also interesting to visit. From the very nicely decorated Louvre Rivoli metro station, let's take line 1 to the Champs-Élysées. If you're feeling in great shape, get out that station Franklin Roosevelt. But if you start to be a little tired, go to George V, the next station. For the French, who are often chauvinistic, the Champs-Élysées are quite simply the most beautiful avenue in the world. Well, as you are now going to ascend it up to the Arc de Triomphe, you will be able to make up your mind. To get to the bottom of the Arc de Triomphe, never ever cross the roundabout. It would be suicidal. There's a tunnel at the top right of the Champs Elysees or at the top left of the Avenue de la Grande Armée, as recorded here, to get there. It costs 13 euros to get to the top, 
and it's free for children under 18. Climbing up there is tiring, but the view is awesome. Just under the Arc de Triomphe at Charles de Gaulle Etoile Metro Station, let's board Metro Line 2 to get to Anvers Metro Station at the border of Montmartre. From there, it's a short yet steep walk to the lower station of the Montmartre funicular. The view is already amazing. Taking the funicular will only cost you a metro ticket. Let's climb the last remaining stairs to the Sacré Coeur. While the basilica's architecture might not suit everyone's taste, I personally find its atmosphere quite serene. The view from below the church is splendid. There's no real reasons to climb on top, as it would be quite tiring after this long day. Let's embark on the leisurely stroll through the enchanting streets of Montmartre, where every step unveils hidden gems, cozy cafes, and the vibrant spirit of this artistic haven. You can wander aimlessly, or you can follow the path I've designed on my Montmartre dedicated video, discovering Paris neighborhoods, romantic Montmartre in 20 must sees. For dinner, two options Bouillon Pigalle, providing French cuisine at very affordable prices, or Edmond, the restaurant of the Terrace Hotel, overlooking Old Paris after a cocktail taken on a rooftop terrace. A last look on the Moulin Rouge, a short 20 minute taxi or Uber ride to your hotel, and it's time to summarize this second day. Wow, we've done a lot! Once again today, no breakfast at the hotel. We're starting our journey at 8 am, first via Metro Line 3 to Arts et Métiers and then walking to the Café du Marché des Enfants Rouges. A nice café for your breakfast, just opposite the oldest covered market in Paris, the Marché des Enfants Rouges. In the north part of Le Marais neighborhood, you step into history at Marché des Enfants Rouges. It dates back to 1615, and time-honored stalls invite you to savor the city's rich culinary heritage. For the next two hours, take a leisurely pace and admire the numerous beauties of Le Marais. Le Marais, which can translate as the swamp, is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Paris. It is known for its charming narrow streets, 17th century architecture, fashionable boutiques, museums, and trendy bars and restaurants. Le Marais is considered the LGBTQ district of Paris, with a rich history of being a center for gay nightlife and culture. It's also the Jewish district of Paris. Here are some of the must-see places in Le Marais. Place des Vosges is a beautiful square surrounded by elegant red brick buildings with arcades on the ground floor. And the one of these arcades is Carrette, a pastry shop and restaurant that makes some of the best macarons in Paris. On one of the corners of Place des Vosges, pass under a small arch and discover the magnificent 17th century Hotel de Sully. Now from there, let's walk to Notre Dame de Paris on the Ile de la Cité. After the 2019 fire, it's still under repair. Hopefully, it should reopen at the end of 2024. Just a five minute walk away is another jewel of Christianity, the Saint Chapelle. 
it is highly recommended to book your tickets in advance for the Sainte Chapelle. If the ground floor is beautiful, the second is just amazing. The colors are ever changing depending on the weather outside the church. Let's walk now to Place Dauphine, where we will grab a bite to eat at one of the restaurants there. We will now board the 2 p.m. Seine River cruise of Vedette du Pont Neuf for a one hour cruise on Paris most majestic avenue. The cost of the pre-booked ticket is 13 euro. Let's now walk to the most romantic bridge in Paris, the Pont des Arts. The next bit of our stroll seems quite straightforward, but don't hesitate to get lost in the small streets of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. You have plenty of time before heading to the Café de Flor for a well-deserved break. Maybe you will want to check this video about the Saint-Germain neighborhood before making this stroll. Time for a short break at Café de Flore or Café des Deux Magots. And after this nice break in such a famous café, what about visiting the Saint-Germain-des-Prés Abbey, one of the oldest churches in Paris? We are approaching the end of our day. Our last place to visit today is the Montparnasse Tower rooftop terrace. To get there, take Metro Line 4 and exit at Montparnasse. To access the rooftop on the 59th floor, the ticket cost is 19 euro on weekdays and 20 euro on weekends. And it's time stamped, so you have to choose in advance on which day and at which hour you'll be there. But the view during sunset and at dusk is simply magical. For our last dinner, Let's try something totally French, but with a twist. Enjoy the best of Brittany cuisine at La Crêperie de Jocelyn, a top Paris crêperie with a menu full of savory and sweet delights for your taste buds. And this is it. End of your last day in Paris. While you take a taxi or Uber back to your hotel, 
or a last metro ride on lines 13 and 8. Think of all you've seen in just three days. I hope this video serves as a helpful guide, offering you valuable insights and inspiration to plan and make the most of your upcoming stay in Paris. I will very soon add a five-day itinerary, including more distant things, such as the Palace of Versailles. Thanks for watching, and see you soon on another of my videos.